Anne Frank was a Jewish girl who became famous for the diary she wrote during the Second World War. She was born in the German city of Frankfurt in 1929. She had a sister, Margot, who was three years older. Things were going badly in Germany. Unemployment was high and many people were poor. At the same time, Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party were gaining supporters by promising to solve the country's problems. The Nazis hated the Jews and blamed them for the problems. When the Nazis came to power in 1933, hostility to the Jews increased. Anne's parents, Otto and Edith, decided to flee to the Netherlands. They settled in Amsterdam, here, on Merwedeplein. Anne soon felt at home. She went to school, learned Dutch and made new friends. Six years later, war broke out across Europe. In 1939, Nazi Germany invaded Poland, and in 1940, the German army occupied the Netherlands. The Nazi occupiers made life increasingly difficult for Jews. Jews have to wear a Jewish star. Jews have to hand in their bicycles. Jews are not allowed in the tram. Jews are not allowed to ride in cars. Jews must attend Jewish schools, and so on and so forth. In the summer of 1942, after Anne's sister, Margot, was ordered to report for a so-called labor camp, the Frank family went into hiding behind Otto's business on the Prinzengracht. They were joined there later by the Van Pels family and Fritz Pfeffer. The eight people in hiding were helped by loyal staff and friends of Otto's, Miep and Jan Hees, Johan Voskal and his daughter Bep, Victor Kugler and Johannes Kleiman. Meanwhile, the Nazis had tightened their grip, organizing raids and arresting and deporting Jews to so-called labor camps. In reality, these were concentration and death camps. In her diary, Anne wrote about living in the hiding place, the war, and her thoughts and feelings. I feel bad for lying in a warm bed while my dearest friends are out there somewhere, thrown or fallen to the ground. And that only because they are Jews. An appeal from the Dutch government in London inspired Anne to rework her diary entries into a book. Before she had finished, however, their hiding place was discovered and all eight were captured on the 4th of August 1944. They were deported to the concentration and death camp Auschwitz-Birkenau. Miep Gies and Bep Voskal, two of the helpers, found the diaries Anne had left behind. Miep kept them in case Anne ever came back. But she didn't come back. In February 1945, Anne and Margot died of typhus in appalling conditions in the concentration camp Bergen-Belsen. Anne was 15. Of the eight people, only Anne's father, Otto, survived the war. When he read Anne's diaries after the war, they made a deep impression. He discovered how much writing had meant to her. No one who doesn't write can know how fine it is. And if I don't have the talent to write for newspapers or books, well then, I can always go on writing for myself. Otto read how Anne had hoped to publish a book, so he carried out her wish. Anne's story about life in hiding and the war is read all over the world. Her diary has been translated into more than 70 languages. The hiding place is now a museum and welcomes more than a million visitors a year. In the secret annex, Anne's day began at a quarter to seven. She would take the screens down from the windows and then the morning ritual in the bathroom would start, as one by one the group in hiding prepared for the day. There was a strict schedule, because by 8.30 the annex had to be completely silent. That was when work began for the staff of the warehouse. They didn't know there were people hiding in the secret annex. Because the group's helpers in the office had not yet arrived, any sound might betray them. Even the toilet was a no-go area as the soil pipe ran right through the warehouse. Shh, Father. Quiet, Otto. Shh. Pim, it's 8.30. Come here now. You can't run the water anymore. Walk quietly. 
Even after the helpers started work in the office above the warehouse, the people in hiding still had to be quiet. By then, any noises from the hiding place heard in the warehouse would seem to come from the offices. They would spend the rest of the morning reading, studying and preparing lunch. Anne was doing a stenography course together with Margot and Peter, and also learned French, German, algebra and history. At half past twelve, the warehouse workers would go out to lunch. The helpers and the people in hiding would eat together in the annex. Then, at one o'clock, they would turn on the radio for the latest news from the BBC. The helpers would stay until about quarter to two, then go back to work. At that point, the people in hiding could have a nap. Anne used the time to study and to write. By about four o'clock, it was time for coffee and dinner preparations would start. The warehouse workers went home at 5.30. Their helper, Bep Voskiao, usually popped in after that to ask if any of them needed anything. When she, too, had left for home at quarter to six, the people in hiding would spread out throughout the building. With everyone gone, they could emerge safely from their hiding place and even go into the front section of the building. Herman Van Pels would check the day's mail. Peter Van Pels fetched the bread left for them in the office. Otto Frank typed, presumably business letters. Margot and Anne did some office work for the helpers, such as filing letters, and August Van Pels and Edith Frank would cook the evening meal. They also washed themselves in the office kitchen, the only available hot water. After dinner, the group would read or chat or play games. The windows were blacked out as evening fell and preparations for the night began at nine. Furniture had to be moved to make rooms ready to sleep in. Just as in the morning, the group followed a strict schedule for the bathroom, one after another. Anne's turn was from nine to 9.30. After that, the secret annex gradually fell silent. <laughs> 